Hello and welcome to a lesson on basic trigonometry. In this lesson, I'll introduce you to the three trigonometric ratios of sine, cosine and tangent, and we'll look at how we can use these to find the sides and angles within right angle triangles. So to begin, let's have a look at a right angle triangle. I've marked on an angle theta. We often use Greek letters to label angles. And if I've got this angle theta, in which I'm interested, I've marked on the three sides in relation to theta. Now this side here is called the hypotenuse, and if you've studied Pythagoras theorem, you'll already know what that is. So in a right angle triangle, the hypotenuse is always the longest side. It's the one opposite the right angle, as far away from the right angle as you can get. But the other two sides can change their names. We can have the opposite side, it's opposite this angle theta, and we can have the adjacent side. Adjacent means next to. It helps make the angle theta. But if I put theta up here, if I was interested in that angle, this side down here would be the opposite side, and that one would be the adjacent. This one would still be the hypotenuse. Now then, we have three trigonometric ratios called sine, cosine, and tangent that we define in a right angle triangle like this. And we say that sine theta, written as sin, is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Cosine theta is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And tan theta is the opposite side divided by the adjacent. So whichever pair of sides we need to look at, there is a trigonometric ratio that refers to them. If we're looking at O and H, we use sine. If we're looking at A and H, we use cosine. And if we're looking at O and A, we use tan. Now, these have to be learned, but a little bit of help along the way. Some people like to think of it as socator or soakator. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. And if you find that difficult to remember, there are various little sentences around to help you. Here's one here. Some old horses can always hear their owners approaching. Just to pick out the letters S O H C A H T O A. So off we go. From here, we'll look at using sine, tan, and cosine to find sides and angles in right angle triangles. We'll now work through nine examples. The first six will find an unknown side in a right angle triangle, and the last three will find an unknown angle in a right angle triangle. So beginning with example one, here we have a right angle triangle, we have a 23 degree angle marked, a side X we're trying to find, and another side that's 17 centimeters. Now the starting point is always the same. What we do is we identify which two sides these are in relation to the 23 degree angle. Well, the 17 is the hypotenuse. It's the longest side. It's opposite the right angle. What about this X? Is it the opposite or is it the adjacent? It's the opposite. It's away from the angle. It isn't helping make the angle. Adjacent means next to. So X is the opposite side. Now, I've, to remind us, I've written the three ratios down here. The one that connects O and H is sine. So we're going to be using the fact that sine is O over H. But sine on its own doesn't make any sense. It has to be the sine of an angle. So it's sine 23 degrees is equal to the opposite side, X, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 17. So we've replaced the O and the H by X and 17. Now to get X on its own, I simply multiply this equation through by 17. So on the left hand side, I get 17 sine 23 degrees. And on the right hand side, I've just got X because X divided by 17 times 17 is just X. Now I need my calculator to do 17 times sine 23. Now on this calculator, I have to type the angle before I hit the sine button. So I have to say 17 multiplied by the sine of 23 degrees equals 
6.64. So x is equal to 6.64 and the units are centimetres since the other side is measured in centimetres. But that calculator is quite unusual these days. Most scientific calculators, you don't have to type the angle and then hit the sign button. You just type it in the way you read it. So it's 17 multiplied by sine 23 degrees on most makes of calculator. Moving on then to example two. Again, the first thing we do is identify the two sides in relation to this angle. 31 kilometers is the hypotenuse, the longest side. What about the X? Well, it's next to the angle. It's helping make the angle. So it's the adjacent. And the ratio that connects those two is cos. Cos is equal to A over H. Now, cos on its own doesn't make any sense. It's got to be the cosine of an angle. So it's cos 37 degrees is equal to A over H is X over 31. Just substituting X for the A and 31 for the H. Now I need to multiply this equation through by 31 and I get 31 cos 37 degrees is equal to x. So x is equal to calculator time 31 multiplied by the cos of 37. On this calculator I put the 37 and hit the cos button but on most you type cos 37 equals 24.76 to two decimal places, 24.76, and the units this time are kilometers, because the known side is measured in kilometers. Example three. First, we begin by marking on the two sides. X is opposite the 16 degree angle, away from it. This one is adjacent to it, it's next to it. The one we're not using this time is the longest one, the hypotenuse. So we're only interested in O and A. And the ratio, the trigonometric ratio that links those is tangent. Tan is O over A. Which means that the tan of 16 degrees is equal to the opposite side x divided by the adjacent side, 25. Multiply the equation through by 25, and we get 25 tan 16 degrees is equal to x. So x is equal to 25 times the tan of 16 degrees. 7.17 to two decimal places. 7.17, and the units this time are in meters. And that concludes example three. Now we'll find these next three examples subtly different to the ones we've just done. They'll involve one extra line of work. Example four, we begin as usual by marking on the two sides. This side is opposite the 53 degree angle. This one is the longest side, it's opposite the right angle, so it's the hypotenuse. And the link between O and H is sine. Sine equals O divided by H. So the sine of angle 53 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse 13 over x. And there's the subtle difference. The side we're looking for, the x, is now on the bottom of the fraction, where in the previous three examples it was on the top. And the extra line of work is to multiply through by the x, so we get x sine 53 degrees is equal to 13. But we haven't got x on its own yet. If I had 2x and I wanted to find x, I divide by 2. If I had 3x and I wanted to find x, I divide by 3. Well, I've got sine 53 lots of x, 
So I divide by sine 53. It's x is equal to 13 divided by sine 53. So we end up doing a division on the calculator instead of a multiplication. x is equal to 13 divided by the sine of 53. Answer, 16.28 to two decimal places. 16.28. And the units this time are centimetres. Example five. Identify the two sides. Away from the 62, opposite side of the triangle. So that's O. This one helps make the 62. It's adjacent to it. It's not the hypotenuse, it's not the longest one. Now the link between O and A is tan. Tan is equal to O over A. So we have the tan of 62 degrees is equal to O over A. O is 23 divided by A is X. So again, we've got X as the denominator of the fraction. So to get rid of that, we multiply through by x, we get x tan 62 degrees is equal to 23. And then to get the x on its own, we divide by the tan 62. So it's 23 divided by tan 62. 23 divided by the tan of 62 is equal to 12.23. 12.23 to two decimal places, and this time the units are in metres. Example 6. In relation to this angle, this side is opposite the right angle, it's the longer side, it's the hypotenuse. This side helps make the angle, it's next to it, it's the adjacent. So the link this time we need is cosine. Cos is equal to A over H. So we get the cos of 9 degrees is equal to, the adjacent side is 59, divided by the hypotenuse, which is X. Now, multiply through by the X, we get x cos 9 degrees is equal to 59. So x is 59 divided by the amount of x's we have, cos 9 of them. It's divided by cos 9 degrees. So we've got 59 divided by the cosine of 9 equals 59.74 59.74 and the units are in meters and that concludes example six we've now found six sides in triangles we'll now go on to look at finding angles now we can also use trigonometry to find an angle in a right angle triangle if we know two of the sides. We begin by writing down the sides in relation to the angle. So this is the opposite one, and this is the hypotenuse. So same sort of thing we've been doing. And the link between O and H is sine. Sine equals O over H. So we can write the sine of angle theta, the angle we're trying to find, is equal to the opposite side, 23, divided by the hypotenuse, 35. And then we say that theta is the angle whose sine that is. And the notation for that is theta is sine to the minus 1 of 23 over 35. So this sine to the minus 1 function has to be read as theta is the angle whose sine is 23 thirty-fifths. And the sine the minus one function on a calculator will take the sine 
and give you the angle. So let's get the calculator up. Now on this calculator, the first thing I've got to do is 23 divided by 35 equals. And then I say, give me sine to the minus 1 of that. And I actually hit this up arrow, and you'll see that changes to sine to the minus 1. And as soon as I hit that, it gives me the answer, which to one decimal place is 41.1 degrees. So theta is 41.1 degrees. Now that calculator is quite unusual. On most calculators, you type in the sine to the minus 1 before you type in the 23 divided by 35. And how do you get this sine to the minus 1? Well, again, on most calculators, there'll be a little orange button called INV for inverse or second function. You press that, then the sine key, and the screen should say sine to minus 1. The next important thing is to put this division in brackets. So it's open bracket, 23 divided by 35, close bracket, equals to give you the answer. Have a try on your calculator and see if you get to 41.1 degrees. Example 8. Find theta again. Opposite. 11 is the opposite. And this is the adjacent. The one we're not using this time is the hypotenuse, the longest one. So the link is tan. Tan is O over A. So I can write tan theta is equal to the opposite side is 11 and the adjacent side is 27. So it's 11 over 27. And then we write theta is tan to the minus 1 of 11 27 So on my calculator on screen here, I do the 11 divided by 27 equals. And then I ask it for tan to the minus 1. I've already got the arrow button, arrow button pressed, so it's tan to the minus 1. And the answer is 22.2 degrees to one decimal place. 22.2 degrees. Let's go through again what you do on most calculators. It'll be second function tan to get the tan to the minus 1. Open bracket, 11 divided by 27. Close bracket equals to get the answer. And now the last example, example 9. Opposite the right angle, this is the hypotenuse. 45 centimetre side helps make theta, it's the adjacent side to it. And the link between A and H is cos. Cos equals A over H. So I can write cos theta is equal to A is 45 divided by H is 83. So theta is cos to the minus 1 of 45 over 83. Brackets are essential. So theta is equal to 45 divided by 83 equals, and I want cos to the minus 1. And the answer is 57.2 degrees. 57.2 degrees to one decimal place. And that concludes example 9. Which brings us to the end of this lesson on basic trigonometry. You'll now find an exercise that's split into two sections A and B. In section A there are six questions where you find an unknown side in a right angle triangle. And in section B there are six questions where you find an unknown angle in a right angle triangle.